I want to welcome you to this service of worship at the Moville United Methodist Church, the second Sunday Advent. We will celebrate and, uh, the peace of Christ coming to us in the midst of all that is going on. We, we trust that the, the presence of God is with us. So I pray that you'll be blessed today as we worship, as we move towards Christmas. That God is Emmanuel who is with us. So thank you for coming. And, and then let me get your attention to some announcement. Um, the Ad Council meeting is coming up on um, this week on uh, in fact, on Tuesday, this time is 4 p.m. early, you know, respecting that it get dark quickly, so you come 4 o'clock and we'll get done within an hour, hour and a half, be quickly. And we have in uh, Avonstead, it's this Thursday, 4.30. You are invited to that. Um, Christmas Eve service is 5 o'clock, you know, so prepare for that. Invite your friends. Um, any other announcement we need to make that is not in the bulletin? The giving tree, birth is still going on. Yeah, next Sunday. It's next Sunday. They have to bring all this stuff. You know, so next Sunday. Any other announcement? Let us greet one another with God's love and peace. Praise us to God and prepare your hearts as we sing, Angel, we have heard on high. And my prayer today, O come, O come, Emmanuel. Let us sing together, Angel, we have heard on high.
waiting for the call to worship. A voice cries out, declaring God's presence. Comfort, oh comfort my people, says the Almighty God. We, we come preparing the way of the Lord. Of the Lord. Together, Together we actually the way of God's peace. A voice cries out, declaring God's equity. Let us prepare a path for God in the wilderness of our hearts. Valleys shall be lifted, and hills be made low. We come to make a straight and desert highway. Together we are pressing towards God's peace. A voice cries out, declaring steadfastness. Grass withers, flowers fade, but God's word stands forever. We lift up our voices. I want to invite Randy and Kathy as we prepare to light the Advent candle. And I want you to follow along. Today we light the candle of hope and the candle of peace. So, and as our word is in turmoil, may the peace of Christ help us and guide us. Kathy, this is the reading. You can just stand here. We light these candles as signs of God's shocking hope and just peace. May they be beacons calling us to repent and live the good news of Jesus Christ as we wait, watch, and labor for the day when all people can gather together to worship and glorify God. We wait as people who yearn for peace that bears the fruit of community, equity, and flourishing. Come, Lord Jesus, our Christ. Amen. I invite you for the unison prayer. Let us pray it together. Merciful God, we send your messengers, the prophets, to preach repentance, prepare the way of the salvation. Give us grace to heed your warning and forsake our sins that we may grieve with joy the coming of Jesus, our Redeemer, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. Thank you, Randy and Kathy. I tried the other one. Here we go. At this time, I will invite you to listen to the first scripture reading from the prophet Isaiah. Comfort, comfort my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and proclaim to her that her hard service has been completed, that her sin has been paid for, that she has received from the Lord's hand double for all her sins. A voice of one calling, in the wilderness, prepare the way for the Lord. Make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be raised up, every hill and mountain made low. The rough ground shall become level, the rugged places a plain. And the glory of the Lord will be revealed, and all people will see it together. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken. A voice says, cry out. And I said, what shall I cry? All people are like grass, and all their faithfulness is like the flowers of the field. The grass withers and the flowers fall because the breath of the Lord blows on them. Surely the people are grass. The grass withers and the flowers fall, but the word of God endures forever. You who bring good news to Zion, go up on a high mountain. You who bring good news to Jerusalem, lift up your voice with a shout. Lift it up, do not be afraid. Say to the towns of Judah, here is your God. See, the Sovereign Lord comes with power, and he rules with a mighty arm. See, his reward is with him, and his recompense accompanies him. He tends his flock like a shepherd. He gathers the lambs in his arms and carries them close to his heart. He gently leads those that have young. This is the word of God for God's people. Thanks be to God. I want to invite Becky. The kids will be doing some... Music, thank you. Thank you. 
can can they go on the other side so the camera can pick up them? Yeah, everybody. You, you go on the side. Oh. Yeah. I think it's on. Thank you, Becky and Kiss. That was wonderful. Happy birthday, Jesus. At this time, we will bring forth our gifts, our tithing offering. And thank you for your continued support to this church, your prayer. And we continue to welcome your pledge card for, for the next year so you can continue to do that. So please stand, let us to the doxology in bringing our tithe and offering before the Lord. Praise God from blessing flow.
us pray together the offertory prayer. Gracious God, bless this offering placed upon your altar, trusting your provision for our lives. Help us to be generous giver, dear Lord, of our money and our lives, so that we may make a difference in this town. We ask this through your Son, Savior Jesus Christ, who gave all he was, so that we may have life fully. Amen. Please be seated. This is the time we, as a church family, we have opportunity to share our joys and our concerns. So I invite you with your joys and concerns today. Today we celebrate the joys of birthdays. Susan Chapman, Harold, your birthday is coming up. It's tomorrow. So we give thanks to God for you. And when John, birthday too, is your birthday coming up. And Jeff, Jack, and it's, it's my wife's birthday, not my birthday. My wife, okay? So we'll correct that on the 16th. So may God's blessing and grace shine upon you as you celebrate your birthday. What are your joys and concerns? Continue to pray for our world and for the Middle East, um, for Israel, Gaza, and all the war that is going on, the pain, the refugees, those who don't know what to do, what, where to go, those who are grieving. And God can have mercy for the end of this world. Janice, were you saying something? I was just thinking how beautiful the sanctuary was. I was not here last Sunday. Oh. Oh, this is just absolutely beautiful. And I think it's wonderful that our church did such a great job last Sunday. Wonderful. Thank you, Susan. You everything. And to all of you. Pastor. Go ahead, please. Um, be in prayer for the Marcus Meriden Claiborne Remsen Union School community. Um, they had a student um, take their own life. Oh, pray for Malcolm Corbin School, a student, take his own life. So pray for the family in a challenging time. Those things happen, and unfortunately, so pray. Pam? I have a joy. Um, yesterday, our um, Women's Club sponsored the Chamber of Commerce sent today, and we had 98 children that came and visited with Sam yesterday. And um, the Freemason Catalog and Jay Preston, and we had a very, very good turnout for that. And, you know, we had a big fest. So, with the Lord has been released, we thank all that participated, and uh, we have a great community that comes out and supports these activities. Praise God. <coughs> Any other joys and concerns? Let us prepare for pr prayer. Let us sing this song, O Come e Emmanuel, as we prepare our hearts to give thanks and pray to God. Let us pray. Almighty God, we have come to give thanks to your name, your holy name, your great name, for you are the, our Savior. You have come, O oh come, our prayer today. O oh come, Emmanuel, O oh God. Be our Prince of Peace. 
in this troubled world, we look to you for direction, for guidance, for strength and peace. I pray for your blessing on each person here today and for those who are not with us, your grace to be sufficient for them. Father, we give thanks that as we move towards the season of Christmas, we give thanks that you came to us to show us how much you love us. Allow your spirit to work in us to prepare ourselves. We thank you for the blessing of this church and for this community, for all you continue to do through each of us as a church family. We praise you. We give you the glory. We honor your name. We pray, oh God, for your blessings and all those who are celebrating your birthday, that your grace and peace will be with them. We give thanks for the gift and graces you give to Harold that he can celebrate birthday blessing as he celebrate birthday tomorrow. And John and other and Jack, I pray your peace and blessing to be with their family, oh God. I pray, oh God, for Susan and, and, and my wife as they look forward to celebrate their birthday. The birthday is a gift. And so we thank you for their family. We thank you for the children ministry and for Becky and the way she nurtured the kids and to grow in the grace. We thank you for Liz, for the, the choir for, and the preparation as we continue to sing praises to your name. We thank you for Janice in different ways, our women groups and and discipleship. We thank you for the Ad Council, for the leadership, for all they do. And thank you for Susan and, and Beverly and others who work behind the scene in the kitchen and everywhere for us to continue to do your work in this community, in this church. Bless our work together, oh God. We pray, we remember today our world is in trouble. There's fighting, there's war in the Holy Land. Oh God, have mercy. We pray for family who are torn apart from war and they don't know what to do. They are devastated. They grieve. Some, many have lost their life. Oh Lord, have mercy that this war can come to an end for people to reunite with their family. For those who are refugees who are left home and trying to restart their life, be with them, oh God. For those who heart are heavy, they don't know what to do, give them your comfort and peace. But yeah, our crowd today, oh God. We pray for our political leaders and, and the entire Middle East that there could be peace in our region with Israel and, and Hamas and the Gaza Strip. Oh God, help those people who are there. We pray for those who are hungry today, those who don't have no food. For those who are in prison, I pray for their family, for your grace and love and mercy to be with them. For those in the hospital in need of healing and in need of recovery and strength. For those who are grieving that your comfort and peace will be with them, oh God. In this time of year, we remember the school and the kid that took his own life. I pray for his family. I pray for the entire school system that you will comfort them with your peace. Be with the parents. How much they are devastated, oh God. Have mercy on them. And allow us to be an encouragement and prepare for our school system all across this country and teachers and students and in, in, in the ways that the challenges are real, oh God. Find, may you continue to keep our school safe and, and be with our teachers as they impact lives. In this season of Advent, we say, Come, Lord Jesus, renew our hearts. Show us your mercy. We give thanks. And yes, it's our prayer. We pray together with thanksgiving in our hearts and say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day. Lead us not into temptation.
Amen. Please stand as you are able. Let us sing this song with joy. Lord, I lift your name on high. We'll sing it twice. Lord, I lift your name on high. to sing your praises I'm so glad you're in my life I'm so glad you came to save us came from heaven to earth showed the way from the earth to the cross my death you pay from the grave to the sun Okay, now, uh, hang on a second. Now, I want for us to show that, okay? So let us lift our hands high as a way to say, Lord, we lift as our hands high to you. So could you show your hand up high as a way to worship God, to say, Lord, I lift my, your name on high. Okay, you ready? Let's start again. Lord, I lift your name on high. Yes, yeah, straight in. Lift your name on high. Oh, I love to sing your praises. I'm so glad you're in my life. I'm so glad you came to save us. Running from heaven to earth. Amen. Please be seated. This is a beautiful song. I'm so glad you came to save us. Do you believe that today? Our Savior came to save us. So what a joy it is to lift your name and worship God. God is in this place. Do you feel him? Emmanuel, God is with us. Prepare for the preaching, and we will do the second scripture reading. Please follow along. Mark Gospel chapter 1, verse 1 through 8. It reads, at the beginning of the good news about Jesus the Messiah, the Son of God, as it is written in Isaiah the prophets. I will send my messenger ahead of you, who will prepare your way. A voice of one calling in the wilderness, prepare the way for the Lord, make straight path for him. And so John the Baptist appeared in the wilderness preaching a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sin. The whole Judean countryside and all the people of Israel, Jerusalem went out to him, confessing their sins. They were baptized by him in the Jordan River. John wore clothing made of camel's hair with a leather belt around his waist, and he ate locusts and wild honey. And this was his message. After me comes the one more powerful than I, the straps of whose sandals are not worthy to stoop down and untie. I baptize you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. This is the word of the Lord. Be Let us pray. Speak to our hearts now, O God, by the power of grace divine. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of all our hearts 
be pleasing to you, O God, for you are our rock, our redeemer, our Emmanuel. Amen. Prepare the way for the Lord. How should we prepare the way for the Lord? We all know at times it is difficult to prepare when you are not ready. Have you ever had a time in your life where you have to prepare for a test, where you have to prepare and do what it asks you to do? And when you go through that testing time, you realize you have prepared. Or if you are unprepared, the result is different. And so the invitation to us today is to prepare the way for the Lord. And we see the picture of God coming to our world and, and, and John the Baptist bringing our message, a proclamation, preaching the good news of Jesus Christ. That what Mark Gospel say, this is the good news of Jesus Christ. That Jesus is the Son of God who came to our world. Jesus is the Son of God who died for our Jesus is the son of God. That is the good news that he came. And so John couldn't help that this voice that cries in the wilderness it is a, it's an echo of Isaiah 40 where the people were in exile they were, they were wondering, they have disobeyed and, 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 and from, from chapter 1 to chapter 39 there was doom and gloom all over the place but when you come to chapter 40 God says I have I have a, a word for you. God said there's a new day have been done on you. God says there's comfort for you. And so God in his word says, comfort, comfort you my people. That when we are broken, we have a God who is able to comfort us. So God bring that word of comfort to his people to know that God is in the restoration business. That God came to show us grace. And so he came to save us. So make way for the Lord. So today, there's a voice that you cry in the wood in the midst path for the Lord. Every crooked way, the mountain will be brought low. And so today, how do we prepare the way for the Lord? How do we prepare, listen to what John says, that we as the people of God, we are called to this work. And this is what John said, prepare the way for the Lord. May straight his, a path for him. How do we prepare in our hearts with everything that is going on? How do we take time to, to allow the Spirit of God to renew us, to open ourselves? And the idea the prophet will portray is this. In those days when a king is coming, the people prepare themselves. All the, the roads, the crooked roads, they make everything smooth. It, it took me back when I was growing up. I, one day I went to the village and, and behold, that week I was in the village with my, my grandma's side, the family. They had this festival going on, and part of the tradition is they would select one person would be would be the, almost like a king for the town, and they'll have a parade. And so when they come to a certain entry, all the ladies they will they will put, they will put their garment on the on the on the on the ground, and, and they will be dancing with a traditional dance. And the king will walk on as he will go to the main uh, place of recognition. They, they will do all the work. The young kids will, they will prepare the way. They will, they will clear the ground for these ladies to put all the nice African attire garment on the, on, on the ground to show royalty, to show there's no obstacle for that person to walk on. 
And this is the image of Christ that we prepare. The people are called to prepare themselves. And the same for all, we prepare the way for Christ to come. And we prepare the way, all the places in our life that we, we, we give ourselves to God. That God is the one able to smooth all the crooked places in our lives. The mountain will bring, bring, be brought low because every, every, every area, every aspect, the Savior has come to be our Emmanuel. The Savior has come to show us that whatever that is going on in your life, that whatever problem you have, you have a Savior who have come. Emmanuel, God is with us. So we prepare the way. And sometimes things in our lives, we don't know what is this going on. Sometimes the struggle of our life, we're feeling overwhelmed. And yet, the Savior has come to show us grace and invite us to prepare the way. You see, we cannot prepare the way in our own strength. We cannot prepare our hearts in our own strength. We have to give ourselves fully to God. And so that what John couldn't help in the wilderness to preach repentance and ask the people, give yourself to God and he will renew you. Give yourself, give your heart to God. Because God does not care much about what we do on the outside, but God cares for what we do inside. For all the, our hearts comes joy and peace and, and healing. And so God has come to bring us healing. So by preparing the way for the Lord, we know perhaps we feel inadequate. We know perhaps we have stuff in our life that God does not care about. We feel like or we feel like we are guilty before God, but yet we are called to give ourselves fully. Because the Spirit of God will help us. That what John says, I baptize you with water, but one come after me. He is the greater. He will baptize you with the Spirit, and the Spirit of God will work in your heart. And that's when when Jesus was baptized, the voice came, said, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. So today, my call to you. Today, as Isaiah says, there's time of restoration. It's a new day of dawn. God is doing something new. God is breaking into our world. How will you prepare this Christmas? How will you prepare your heart? Will you be so busy that you forget? And yet, God asking out of us today, let us prepare the way for the Lord. Oh, when we prepare ourselves, when we give ourselves, knowing that we are inadequate, when we surrender to God, to ask for strength, for grace, to look beyond ourselves and say, how can this be that the Savior of the universe came to our world? He came from heaven to earth to show us the way. And from the nerve, he died on the cross. He came to save us. And so we can say, Lord, I lift your name up on high. And we have a song to say, every mountain will be brought low, every valley to the level plain. Why? Because the King of glory, the King of glory, Jesus Christ, has come. Will you be the one to give your heart, to prepare, to give fully to his work, to know that you and I would need a savior and thank God that God came just in time. 
to show us that no matter what is going on in our world, no matter what is going on in our hearts, no matter what is going on with our family and friend, we have a Savior who will care about it. We have a Savior who will love us. We have a Savior who came to redeem us from our sins, to restore us, to make a way where there seems to be no way. For God has come to be the Prince of Peace, the Shalom we need, the one who will bring restoration and healing. So our prayer today, oh God, oh come, oh come, Emmanuel, come and may our hearts be renewed, may our hearts be filled with joy, knowing that Christ light has come to shine in our hearts today. The rough places in our hearts, in our life, we have a Savior who have come to give us grace upon grace, to show us mercy, to show all his hope that we have a Savior. May it be so. Oh God, we pray that God's people say amen. amen. So Father, we thank you. May your spirit allow us to prepare ourselves to hear the good news that you are coming again to our world. Renew our hearts. We give thanks for your word, that your word will fill us and accomplish its purposes in our life for your honor and for your glory. Amen. Our closing song, is she? Okay. We do the we'll do the Apostle Creed, following the Apostle Creed, and we will do our closing song. Please stand as you are able. Let us, with confidence, uh, do the Apostle Creed together. <laughs> Let us affirm what we believe. I believe in God the Father Almighty, the God of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate. The third day he rose from the dead seated at the right hand of the Father. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, Amen. Let us sing our closing song with joy. The words are so beautiful. The first part of it is, I want to walk as a child of the light. I want to follow Jesus. God set the stars to give light to the world. The star of my life is Jesus. In him there is no darkness at all. The night and the day are both alike. The Lamb is the light of the city of God. Shine in my heart, Lord Jesus. Let us sing with joy.
I want to see the brightness of God. I want to Jesus, sun show me with Father. no darkness at all, night and read together the refrain as a way to say that's our prayer today that Christ will shine in our hearts as we prepare the way for him let us read together the refrain in him there is no darkness at all the night and the day are both alike the lamb is the light of the city shine in my heart May God bless you. May he keep you. May his face shine upon you. And may he be gracious to you. Go in peace and serve the Lord. Amen. Bless you. Have a good week. Yeah, you too, Carl.